Alright, this is going to be a video response to GII video, henceforth referred to by his first name, Marshall. Marshall Brain is his name. In this video, Where Did Our Universe Come From? A Guide for Christians. I'm going to break this video down into three sections. My first section, I'll attempt to correct four erroneous claims that he makes. Second, I will contest Marshall's main argument, which is more of a science of the gaps argument. And then I'm going to rebut the God of the gaps allegation he makes towards Christians, which is kind of a argument that suggests that God is used as a filler of a gap in our knowledge. So first, as I watched Marshall's video, I caught four erroneous claims, at least in my opinion. Initially, Marshall claims that either God or a natural process created the universe. He suggests, quote, nature created the universe just like nature created our sun, our solar system, our planet, our planet's weather, and all the life on our planet, end quote. Now, the problem with espousing a natural process as the source of the universe is that a natural process presupposes the existence of matter, time, and space. But according to general rel relativity via Einstein in 1917, all space, time, and matter came into being at the Big Bang. Thus, a natural process as an explanation to the coming into being of the universe is presupposing the existence of something, that being matter, space, and time, that did not in actuality exist prior to the moment of the Big Bang. Thus, Marshall is suggesting that something is coming from nothing, which is worse than magic. Now, I will address Marshall's double theistic problem in a moment. Second, Marshall states, quote, more than half the people living in the U.S. today believe that God created heaven and earth 6,000 years ago, just as the Bible says, end quote. However, the creation account in Genesis does not necessarily suggest a young earth. This is one reading of the text, for sure. However, the text can also suggest an old earth view. Quickly, among other reasons, the Hebrew word for a day is yom, that does not exclusively indicate a 24-hour period, for example, Psalms 94 through 6. In addition, one could argue that the naming of the animals in Genesis 2 occurred in one yom. However, such a naming of the animals would seem to take a lot longer than a 24-hour period. Whether one believes this is the actual meaning of the text is still up to some theological discussion. However, the translation of yom, in addition to the structure and uniqueness of the Genesis narrative, and Old Earth is still an open theological view to the Christian, and thus Marshall is creating too strict an interpretation of Genesis. Concisely, the Earth doesn't have to be 6,000 years old, Marshall. Third, Marshall states, what your religion is proposing is that a being named God, or Allah, magically appeared out of nowhere and that he ma magically created the universe out of nothing. You currently have two magical steps in your thinking that no one will ex ever explain. If you are intelligent, that should make you uncomfortable, end quote. First, theologically speaking, Christians do not believe that God magically appeared out of nowhere, but rather God exists necessarily. Scripture teaches that God always was, Psalm 90, verse 2, for example, and thus God halts the irrational, infinite regress of causes that one would need if they suggest that the universe was uncaused. Second, creation ex nihilo, or creation out of nothing, is supported scientifically and philosophically. If Marshall wishes, wishes to refuse the idea that the universe was not made of pre-existing materials, then he is espousing a view of an eternal and a static universe which has been disproven. See the description. However, if he agrees that the universe began to exist along with the theory of general relativity, then he's accepting creation ex nihilo, where he likes it or not. Fourth and lastly, Marshall reads, there is not a single scientific example anywhere showing that any god has any effect on our universe. The idea that suddenly we start writing scientific equations that include God is ridiculous." End quote. However, such a claim is utterly nonsensical for at least four reasons. First, we don't need a scientific equation in order for us to know that something exists. This would be like saying morality does not exist because we don't have a scientific equation for it. That's absurd. Second, science cannot prove everything that exists. For example, logic or mathematics. Science presupposes those two things. Met metaphysical truths, moral judgments, aesthetic judgments. And ironically, science cannot account for itself. See the description for further clarification of those five examples. Third, there is substantial evidence that points to God as the source of the universe. It is the sole purpose of the Kalam cosmological argument to demonstrate this point. Fourth and lastly, how can a system that exclusively studies the material ever be able to prove the immaterial? This position is of scientism, which I have already hopefully demonstrated to be false. See the description for that link. 
Now, having clarified those four issues, I would like to move to the following claim by, made by Marshall. Quote, it may be several decades before we completely understand the origin of the universe. However, science will understand it eventually. This is certain. How do we know this is certain? Because we can look at the history of science, and he gives examples like the flight, uh, flight of planes, galaxies, and DNA, moon landing, etc. It is interesting to note Marshall's double standard. As vehemently opposed as Marshall Brain is against what he views as a God of the Gaps argument, which he thinks are silly and stupid, he ironically resorts to the very same argument when he replaces God with science. He suggests that science will fill the gap of our, of our knowledge and understanding. So instead of a God of the Gaps argument, we have instead a Science of the Gaps argument. Not only is this a double standard, but in addition it blatantly begs the question in favor of a naturalistic explanation of the universe. Now Marshall offers one reason that he thinks this is justified, namely the history of science demonstrating that science will prove the source of the universe. But again, science, while demonstrating many truths about reality, has not and cannot answer all gaps in our knowledge. For example, truths about ethics, aesthetics, or logic. Moreover, it simply does not follow that the acquiring of scientific knowledge in the past necessitates such acquiring of knowledge in the future, specifically the source of the universe. This would be an approximate of a slippery slope, meaning that Marshall's claim is fallacious because there's no reason to believe that one event may inevitably follow from another without an argument for such a claim. Again, to purport that the explanation will be naturalistic because many in the past have been is begging the question in favor of naturalism. Thus, Marshall's argument is ironically similar to the very argument he suggests the theist guilty of. But this segues nicely to the last point in section, namely, is the theist guilty of inserting God in a gap in our knowledge? This is my last contention with Marshall Brain's video. Finally, Marshall views those who suggest God as a source of the universe is a God of the Gaps argument, like past explanations in history. For example, explanations of the sun, um, fertility, crops, etc. He goes on to suggest that the theists have a double the explaining, explaining to do since God purportedly appears magically from nothing and then creates the universe from nothing. Let me briefly say two things on this subject. First, God as the cause of the universe is not positioning God arbitrarily into some knowledge gap. Rather, God is suggested on strong philosophical and scientific inference. Philosophically speaking, the metaphysical absurdities of something coming from nothing is still present. Marshall does not even offer an explanation for this argument. Scientifically speaking, we can deduce that the cause of the universe must be immaterial, spaceless, timeless, powerful, uncaused, and personal. The personal nature of the first cause comes about in light that there are only two causal explanations, those being personal and scientific. However, we cannot espouse a scientific explanation since there was nothing before the Big Bang, and thus the cause cannot be accounted in terms of laws operating on initial conditions. Thus, God is suggested as the cause of the universe due to good theological, scientific, and philosophical reasons being present, those being the aforementioned points above. Second, I've already suggested the sound philosophical and scientific rationale and argumentation behind accepting creation ex nihilo out of nothing and rejecting an infinite regress. Thus, the claim that Christians are using a God of the Gaps argument is invalid since the Christian is deducing God as an explanation via the scientific facts. Thus, it seems to me the only gap argument being appealed to here is Marshall Brain's Science of the Gaps argument.